Hi guys, I'm Prateek and this video is going to be super interesting because we're going to place your first futures trade. Now make sure you have futures enabled on your account because it's a separate segment with the National Stock Exchange or the BSC. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is, apart from just making the order for the futures, we're also going to understand how M2M works overnight as well as intraday and a bunch of other concepts on margin. So we'll bring all that we learned together in this trade. I've also noticed a lot of people think placing a futures contract which has so many mechanisms is a little difficult to do. The truth is, it couldn't be simpler. It's just adding it on your watch list and placing an order. Let me show you how. So I'm already logged in and I'm going to search for Infosys. And we can see if I type Infi FUT, I can see the September futures, which is the current month, October, which is the next month, and the far month, which is November futures. So I'll add Infi for September because I want to trade maybe this month. So if I open the buy window, we can see that the buy window looks very similar to something like equity, except you have an expiry date, that's September futures. And of course, uh, you have a quantity, that's your minimum lot size, we already know, that's 600. Uh, the price, let it remain at 1719, that's where the market is right now. Uh, this will be a limit order. And the most important thing over here to note is the margin required. The margin required is 1,83,981. And that little refresh button, in case there's a lot of fluctuation, I can use that to check what's the latest margin required. So you saw that number change just now. So 180,000 is what I need, but I'll just cancel this order and open my balance. So I have an opening balance of 6.52 lakhs uh, and I'm already using 4 lakhs with some other positions. The balance amount available for me is 2.52 lakhs. So as we know, the margin requirement is 1.8 lakhs for this one lot, but we have 2.52. You need a little more in case you get into losses in a position. So you should have slightly more funds than the margin requirement. So let me place that order. I'll open the chart again of Infi and uh, I'll change this to 10 minutes and I'll open the buy window. And uh, so what's the quantity we should place? It should be one lot. We know 600 uh, is the lot. And I can just use the up arrow to actually change this to different quantities. So 600 times two, that's 1200 times three, that's 1800, so on and so forth. In multiples of 600 units is what the, how the quantity changes. I'll go back to 600, uh, which is the minimum amount. And I'll check the margin requirement. So all we really need to do is place the order, but let me do something interesting. We can see that Infosys is trading at 1715. Let me change the price to 1710, which is about five rupees away from where the market is right now. And I'll just simply place this order. Now, when I go to the orders tab, we can see that this order right now, it's an NRML order, that's a normal order, quantity 600. Zero out of 600 means not one single share has been filled yet. And this is the LTP. And this is the current price that we've put in, but the LTP is almost five points away. The status is open, which means the order is not executed yet. Now, to make sure that we actually get the price, I'll open the market depth over here and see what, what people are offering at. And I'll edit my order to make sure the order is placed. So I can see that people are offering the lot at 1714.65. So I know if I type this, it'll get filled. So as you can see, we changed the price to 1716.15 and the order is filled. Now to see my order, I can see the executed uh, tab over here where it shows that one lot has been executed at 1716. And when I go to positions, we can see that that long position is now open over here. So you'll see in fee September futures NFO, 600 quantity is long. The average price is such, this is the current price. So this PNL that you see over here is actually live. And what it does, it, it compares the current LTP versus your average price. And that difference multiplied by your lot size, that's your quantity of 600, gives you a profit or a loss. Now, since our quantity is 600, 
every rupee change is a plus minus of 600 rupees for us now this pnl is done on a real time basis and is actually called a mark to market at the end of the day let me explain the mark to market is a process of debiting and crediting your account based on the profits slash losses that you have made on a futures contract so let's understand mark to market for overnight positions a little better let's suppose that we buy at 165 we sell at 170.1 and the lot size is say 2000 shares um uh, now let's suppose um we want to calculate profit so in this case obviously 170 minus 165 um will become how we calculate our profit so 170.1 minus 165 and we multiply that by 2000 um to get a profit of 10200 now here it's pretty simple because we have an entry price we have an exit price and we multiply it by the number of shares that's the lot size to get a profit or loss but when the same transaction is actually done as an overnight position the mechanism changes a little bit so let's understand how that works i'm on the margin and mark to market chapter on varsity and we'll be using this as reference so if you want to go deeper into this please visit this page you can see the numbers with me we'll assume that this contract we're holding is for 4 days therefore it's an overnight position the entry price is the same it's at 165 and let's see what happens on day 1 our entry price is 165 simple enough the closing price of that day is 168.3 Remember margin is always calculated on the closing price of the day. So 168.3 minus 165 multiplied by 2000 lot size gives you a 6600 rupee profit. This profit is credited to you on your trading account. Now the next day closing price is 172.4. However, the reference point that is your buy portion will not be 165. it will actually be the previous day's closing price that's 168.3 therefore the m to m calculation will be as follows the closing price of day 2 minus the closing price of day 1 multiplied by 2000 shares gives you plus 8200 this again is credited to you so on day 3 your buy reference point is not 165 but the closing price of day 2 and the closing price of day 3 is what we're going to use to calculate the m to m for that day in this case there is a minus 1600 debited to your trading account on the fourth day the magic happens we actually decide to exit our futures contract at 170.1 so our reference point for the buy is the previous day's closing price minus our exit that's 170.1 and we multiply that by 2000 units of shares to give us a minus 3000 for that day now notice in this fourth day we aren't using the closing price of the day because we actually exited the futures contract now if you add the entire daily m to m calculations you'll get 10200 as a profit when we saw in our original example 10200 so what really mattered in the end was your entry price and your exit price In both cases in the overnight position and the intraday position they were exactly the same the profit and loss was exactly the same the only thing that differed is that if you hold these contracts overnight there is a daily m to m check that happens uh, where it credits and debits your account this is mainly done to prevent default just make sure if you initiate a position and want to hold it overnight you must have enough margin that's your span plus exposure but above that you should also have more funds to accommodate for any losses that you may have and if you remember we had taken a long on infi let's see what that trade is doing and i'll sell this as a market order because we did a limit order earlier and i'll press press sell and as you can see buying and selling futures is not that big of a deal it's pretty easy to do so as you can see there's nothing to be scared of futures as an instrument it's really easy to execute but of course you know don't be trigger happy and just press buy sell buy sell when you feel like have some system or some thought process behind anything that you do in the next video we'll talk about how settlement works for futures key takeaways from this video are 